Hello and welcome to another IGK tutorial. This is part two of making a simple game. Uh, in this one um, I've basically added a menu system and made it so you can go to and from the game. Um, no problem. So there's no real changes up to here apart from the fact I've got rid of all the initialization part. Uh, I've put that into a little um, go subroutine that we can use later on. I'm still leaving the sounds here because I want to use them in the menu. So I'm, I've loaded one new sound um, flying.wav um, and that's going to be used in the menu. So in the menu part I've created a, a new label called menu so we can go to it or whatnot although we don't need to in actual fact um, because it's never goes up to ever at any point so it's not really needed so yeah I'm digressing um, yeah so basically if menu equals zero which it will because it's there's nothing been set at the start um, it'll run this bit of code this basically sets up all the images uh, well it adds one image and then sets up all the sprites to do with it um, sets the, the frame up and the animations now I'm gonna go a bit more into this so this this is um quite a big sprite I've made, 256 across by 64 down and two frames and that's the actual image you can see I've gridded it there so you can see that's the size of the sprite it's grabbing and it's just grabbing those two frames out of there uh, 256 across by 64 down and that's what that command does uh, you could change that, you could make it half that so you could have two um, you know, it's 256 by 256 image um, so basically yes yeah, so it's not 512 across I'm going mad it's 256 across um, yeah so it's it's basically a pair of two image um, anything that you want to use generally in IGK especially if you want to port it across to Android or iPhone you need to make sure that they're pair of two images so 64 by 64, 128 by 128, 256 by 256, 512 by 512, so on and so forth, that sort of thing. Uh, you can mix them, you could have 512 by 256, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and you know, you'll get no issues with clipping and things in IGK. Um, so that's basically the uh, set animation command. And like I say, there I'm grabbing the animation, 256 across by 64 down and two frames. I'm setting the sprite frame to one because I want it to be that one and then I'll do the same for this crash. So that's set there and I'll do the same for the crash bit menu SP2. Should have separated them a little bit easier to see what's going on. Let's set up the first one, let's set up the second one, set it to frame two. Um, so I'm using the same image again it's not really necessary, I mean you could use lots of images here a menu screen isn't exactly going to slow the system down but I'm just going as I've started um, and I'm positioning both the sprites here menu SP and menu SP2 which I've created um, using a percentage method so that it'll work on everything um, this initially sets up the first position I want it to be well where I want it to end up at and then in the menu we're going to make it animate to move into that position um, but that just initially sets up the place um, make some text, position the text set the alignment so it's centrally aligned um, when you're positioning it um, make it invisible to start with because we don't want to see the text initially um, in fact this might be a good point to run the program I'll just go through the rest of this um, yeah, we hide the text and we set a couple of variables to go menu offset, make menu x offset 2 um, these two variables here uh, I'm just setting to two different values minus 300 and 300 um, menu is equal in 1 because we want it only to run this bit of code once because it'll keep looping round in the menu this is a good way of resetting it um, and it's at the menu speed which is how fast these sprites are going to move um, this little bit of code isn't really needed but if you want to use uh, an Android it all it does if it checks if it exists if it does it sets it to be visible so you can see them when the game starts 
uh, and it plays the sound, the first sound effect for the menu because it only wants to play it once, it puts it in there, that does that nicely uh, and here we've got a me the menu offset we've set there um, and we just add the menu speed on and take away the menu speed off that just to get the directions working um, that's being looped repeatedly so menu speed 2 will be taken off and being added on onto these all the time uh, if it's equal or greater than 0 then it makes sure it stays at 0 so that will make sure it finishes at the right point uh, and that then sets a flag for to show the text um, so I'm just setting this variable here to 1 and this it will be checked later on and show the text up um, and it sets the sprite size just so it, it grows a tiny bit at the end um, and then that's doing the same there with the other sprite and it's, it just sets that there, you don't have to worry about set text size really, in fact you could get rid of a fair bit of this because once one's done the other one's going to be done, they're pretty much the same, they're linked up um, this positions the sprite and it adds on the menu offset an x2 offset here that you've set, that'll make it move uh, and this basically, if show text equals 1, which is where you, you've set it to equal 1 there, then the text becomes visible. Um, it plays the explode sound because it knows that the two things have got together. And it's. Well, that's, that's pretty much it there. And then it's checking to see if you're actually hitting them here in the menu. We'll go into that in a sec, but let's just quickly run it. So that's bit of cards basically done that. And once it's finished, um, you've got your start and exit buttons here that you can move mouse over. Uh, you can see that change size slightly just to give a bit of movement. Um, and that's what this is doing here. Um, as soon as get text hit test um, is true, then and the, obviously we'll oh, we'll start again. Uh, so if that's true, when start TX text is being hit by pointer X and pointer Y, so that's the coordinates that you're using to check against, as soon as it hits it, it'll be true, and then it'll run this code. Um, so it sets the text size to be slightly bigger, because it's normally at 36, and it's at 40. Um, and at the bottom here, it sets it back to 36. So basically when it's over, over the um, the text it'll make the it grow and then as soon as it's not over the text it'll make it shrink uh, and then inside here if you click basically with pointer pressed it runs the init which is the code I moved from the top um, I'll put it down to the bottom into a little go sub we'll get to that um, it deletes all the stuff that I've created for this menu sets some flags so that it doesn't keep shooting the sound effect there, see? Um, I only want the explode to happen once, so we, we set these flags here. Uh, same for the show text. Um, and then it goes to the main, which is the game. Uh, and this bit of code here is the exit code. It just basically ends. You could make it delete all this as well if you want it to be tidy. Um, but I haven't bothered copying it over there yet. Um, normally I don't really much bother with that, but I don't know, it might leave mess behind. I doubt it. I very much doubt it in reality, but just in memory, at least, in the OGK player. Um, so yeah, that's exiting. Um, the main loop, you can see I've, all I've done here is I've changed where I'm going to the collision label. I've moved it down to the bottom. That's just so that some of the sprites don't get... It doesn't ask for things to do with all these, these sprites and text. Um, when I've deleted it, when you actually exit the game, because it deletes all the stuff, so I'll just move that down there. That gets rid of that problem. Um, and this, if menu equals zero, that's just the flag I've used for the menu. And if it equals zero, then it will exit. Um, that's basically for when you die. Um, I think everything else here is pretty much the same. And then I've added in. Um, into collision when you die when lives are less than zero 
um, I've made menu equals zero and goes up clear. Uh, the same for the if planet is less than zero. So basically, whenever you duck and die, it sets the menu to be zero, which when it returns back, which it will there um, to the main loop, um, it'll just basically hit that bit of card saying if menu equals zero, and it'll basically exit back to the menu. Um, I've left the ends in just so you can see what it used to do, but now it just goes up clear, and then it just lets it carry on, and then it will return through. Um, so back to collision, well, not back to collision. Sorry, back back here, and then it go. Oh, exit, and it'll be exit automatically sends it back to the last place you go subbed it. Just to explain, uh, so then it basically goes back to where you sent it from in here, which will be there, and then just carries on. So it does so it'll be here, and it'll carry on from there, carry on running, and just rerun this, it'll go oh, menu zero, it'll re, re um, put everything up create everything for you uh, and it's off to go again um, let's get back down there's the clear thing, it's basically just deleting all the sprites all the texts and the image which is nice when you have one image because there's only one image to delete but that's just when you clear the game it goes up to there and then it goes back in it that's just all the stuff we had before just put into a little label with a return at the bottom um, and I've put this little bit of code in just to make sure it shows the joystick if you've got an Android obviously won't do it on the PC um, and it'll just reshow it when the game starts and the rest is pretty much the same, and I don't think I've changed any of the rest of this code. No. Nope. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, so I'll we'll run it. So here we go. Click start. Runs the game. All your score and your lives and everything get reset as well, obviously. Obviously, with this code doesn't remember a high score but that's easy enough to add and you can still go off screen but again that's easy enough to add you just have to check the XY position or rather than just the X really for this because you can't move up and down anyway yeah I'll die not the greatest game, it's hardly going to make any uh, awards but you can see, there we go, it's working um, it's back, if you click start everything's reset, we're all good to go and um, we can play again and that's just a little bit of extra polish, just made it more like a game uh, I don't think I'll be doing any more on this a high score is easy like you say, you can just um, save a variable as high score then you can obviously go a bit further and add a high score table if you wanted but I don't think this game really warrants that so uh, I hope this helped um, and uh, until next time I'll catch you later